I've had a question that I've wanted to answer for the longest time now. What works better, the free Canon webcam utility or the cheapest video capture card on the market? Let's find out. What's up guys, it's Nick. With the world as it is right now, live streams are at a all time high and video conference calls are not the new norm. With that in mind, both Sony and Canon have developed software so you can use your camera as a webcam. No more using that C920, which coincidentally is also at an all time high. This used to be $40 a year ago. Now I'm not saying that you need a professional camera to start live streaming or to join Zoom calls. I've even actually uploaded a video on how you can use your phone's camera as a webcam. But if you do want to look your best, and if you purchase a camera previously for either photography or video making, here's what you need to know. I own a Canon camera, which is why we will be focusing on Canon software. Like I said before, it basically turns your camera into a webcam. And you might think that this could be done before, but it's actually a very recent addition. Before this, you would need something like a capture card, and we will be getting onto that in a bit. First, we need to download it by searching Canon Webcam Utility. It's important to note that whether you're using a Windows PC or a Mac, Canon has got you covered. You can also see what applications it's compatible with. You'll see the big ones like Zoom, OBS, Teams, and a throwback to Skype. Canon has over 40 camera models listed, but if you don't see your camera right there on the list, I would still try and download it and see if it works for you. At best it does, and if it doesn't, well, there's always the capture card. Now, why is this software so important? Well, there's a few main reasons. First, it's free. You've already purchased a pretty expensive camera, so adding another thing to your list is not a priority. This gives life to older model cameras, so if you have something laying around from a while ago, you can still use it. The only thing you would need is a USB compatible cable, and I'm pretty sure that we all have those lying around. Second, if your camera does not have a clean HDMI view, you can get rid of those boxes and the info with this software. If you're using a capture card with a camera that does not have a clean HDMI view, you can still get rid of the info by pressing it a bunch of times, but that box will always be there unless you turn autofocus on. And if you're live streaming and you're moving around, you really might want to have the autofocus. While using the software, the camera will know not to shut off. However, it will not override the recording limit that your camera has. There are a few issues with the software. Sometimes it doesn't recognize my cameras and I have to reset everything. This has only happened a handful of times, but it's still an inconvenience. And there's also a matter of focus. I have a relatively new camera, the M50 Mark II, and while I'm recording, the autofocus is super fast and clean. However, when I'm using it as a live stream, the autofocus tends to be a bit slower. It does seem to be a delay on the software, but this isn't that big of an issue. This is generally the problem when you use software over hardware. Now, the biggest caveat about using the software is that it is hard capped at 576p resolution. And Canon have even gone as far as to say that this limitation is due to the cable. While this is a problem, it's not really a big deal. If you're streaming, you tend to have your webcam a bit smaller, and since it's directly focused on you, this won't be that big of an issue. If you compare this to using your iPhone as a webcam, which I have done a video on if you want to click the card and watch it, it's a huge upgrade. It's smoother, it's controllable, and it's outstanding quality. This is the Blue AVS Capture Card, or one of the cheapest and most budget-friendly capture cards in the market. It comes in at $20. Right out of the box, you get a small form factor capture card, which connects to your PC through USB, as well as a USB extension. You can plug it into your PC and attach an HDMI with whatever connector your camera has. Mine has an HDMI to micro HDMI output. So if you have a Canon M50, don't make my same mistake. I bought a mini and it's not the same as a micro. You will need to check some options on your camera if you want a clean HDMI output and to check the resolution, but it will mimic your screen and video output onto whatever platform you're using. For Zoom or OBS, it's as easy as selecting the video source which means this is a quick and seamless solution. This specific capture card supports up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. There are other capture cards like the A10 Mini and the Elgato 4K. However, it comes at around 10 times its price or $200. Out of the bat, you will see better resolution. However, the encoding software and the colors are just not the same as the webcam utility. They're really just not that vibrant or smooth as what we get with the software. Using LUTs or LUTs and color correction goes a long way when you're using a capture card. 
I would highly recommend you invest some time into this and you find something that fits your need. If you made it this far, you might be wondering which one of the two is better. But the answer really isn't that easy as none of them is inherently better than the other. Sure, you could say that the capture card is better coming in at a better resolution at 1080 by 30 frames per second, but is it worth the $30 over a free product? <laughs> that really depends on you. Colors with the Canon software are much smoother and you get the chance of using a clean HDMI output on some cameras that may not have it. I've even found that if you're using batteries, the battery life will last you longer as a single charge will last you about two hours. I generally tend to stream for 3 hours, so the way I got around this is by using a dummy battery. This way I can just connect it directly to a power source and completely forget about it. However, reliability is a big issue. Whenever I'm streaming and the program crashes on me or I have to reset my camera to get it to work, I get really annoyed and I just completely stop using it. This however has not happened to me with the capture card. It's worked 100% of the times. Being able to just plug and play as well as being able to rely on something while I'm streaming means more to me than $30. And the higher resolution does come into play after a bit of color correction to the video. I can also connect multiple cameras with more capture cards. Just like the A10 Mini has multiple HDMI outputs, you can use several capture cards and connect several cameras to it. With the webcam utility, you cannot do this. You can only connect one webcam at a time. While this might not be a problem for most of us, if you do want to change a scene, the angle, or just the setup, this might be something you want to look into. I would highly recommend if you have a Sony or a Canon webcam, you start off with the software and then you might try and see if you want the capture card. Honestly, sometimes free is better. If you do want the quality of life perks, you own a different brand of cameras, or you simply want a better resolution, the cheap $20 capture card is for you. It's more than good enough and you don't have to spend $200 to get a good image. Also, you don't have to use your integrated webcam. I chose the budget capture card after using it for a few weeks. However, if I ever lose it or I don't have it at hand, I would go back to the Canon software. The question is, what would you choose? Hopefully this brings a newer light to Canon's webcam utility and the cheapest capture card. If you enjoyed the video, remember that a like and a sub goes a long way. I hope I'll see you next time and bye.